Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we'll be covering how athletic training can be periodized using vertical integration. Before delving into the vertical integration method of periodization, we first need to understand some fundamental concepts regarding athletic training and adaptation. The first concept is the principle of specificity. This principle states that the more similar an exercise is to the competition exercise, the more positive transfer it will have to performance. So if we want to get better at shooting in soccer, for example, we probably need to practice shooting. If we want to squat more weight, we probably need to do some form of squatting. So to get better at a physical quality, we need to train that physical quality. This is important to understand because it means that we need to practice a skill or quality for an extended period of time to actually improve. The second principle to understand is diminishing return. If we continue to perform the same training method over and over again, we will plateau at some point and fail to continue improving. Therefore, variation needs to be implemented to continue progressing over time. This is important to understand because it means we cannot always perform the exact same training over time we need to implement some form of periodization over time so that training has some variation. And the last concept we need to understand is detraining. This is very simple and easy to understand. It basically states that if we don't perform an exercise or physical quality for an extended period of time, our performance will reduce. For example, if Usain Bolt didn't run at all for three months, he would not be at his world record breaking capabilities in the 100 meter sprint. Simply put, if you don't use it, you will lose it. This is important to understand because it means that we need to perform important qualities regularly to ensure they are improved or at a minimum maintained. With these principles in mind, let's now have a look at why the classic block periodization model may have some issues. Block periodization generally trains qualities separately in individual blocks in a sequence. For example, a five week block of strength training may be followed by a block of power training followed by speed training. The issue with this method is that according to the principle of detraining, by the time the athlete has improved their performance in one quality, they will have detrained in the previous quality. So if we perform a sequence of blocks in succession, starting with strength, then power, then speed, by the time we begin the speed training block, the gains established from the strength block would have diminished. Also, if we only perform speed training for one short block before we need to peak, it won't be enough time to fully peak. The other issue that block periodization presents is an increased risk of injury due to the drastic changes in training. Going from only performing power training to maximal speed training is a completely new stimulus that the athlete's tissues are not prepared for. The athlete is then at a high risk of injury every time they begin a new block of training. Let's now have a look at how the vertical integration method may resolve some of these issues. Essentially, vertical integration is where we train all relevant qualities simultaneously throughout the year, except for active rest periods. So how do we implement a vertical integration model? Essentially, there are seven separate qualities of athletic training that can be trained at a given period of time. These are linear speed, change of direction ability, reactive power, meaning the ability to use the stretch shortening cycle, loaded power, maximal strength, hypertrophy, and endurance or conditioning. Not all athletes will require all of these qualities and different athletes will emphasize different qualities to a greater or lesser degree. So the qualities that are important for the athlete will be trained at all times throughout the year and can be periodized to peak at a given time. Let's now go through two examples of different athletes and how they can use the vertical integration model with their athletic performance training. Let's explore how we can use a vertical integration model for a volleyball team or athlete. First and foremost, we need to establish what qualities are important for a volleyball athlete. A volleyball player requires change of direction ability for quick lateral, forward and backward movements, reactive power for repeated jumping and running jumps, loaded power 
for vertical jump propulsion and first step explosiveness, and maximal strength will indirectly enhance the previously mentioned qualities. A volleyball player won't require linear speed since players will never run more than 10 meters in a straight line, hypertrophy training unless it's for injury prevention purposes, or endurance training since the average rally length in volleyball only lasts five seconds. So let's now have a look at how we can periodize these four primary qualities to be in the best condition when we need to be. Change of direction training may start with higher volumes and shorter distances. This will build tissue capacity while the shorter distances will be less intense. We can then transition to longer running distances with lower volumes. Reactive power may start with weighted plyometric exercises such as weighted hurdle jumps. This will involve slower muscle contractions due to the extra weight. We may then transition to unweighted plyometric exercises and overloaded plyometrics such as drop jumps. Loaded power exercises may simply transition from doing heavier loads and therefore slower velocities to lighter loads with faster velocities since this is more specific to the movements performed in volleyball. Strength training may simply follow a linear periodization approach, whereby higher repetitions are used with less weight, which transitions into heavier loads being lifted with lower repetition ranges. So if we put this all together, a periodized plan may look something like this. Every quality is being trained, but the emphasis of each quality is adjusted over time. This way, the athlete will never be completely out of shape for their sport, but it also gives enough variation to allow progress to continue. Next, we will look at how we can use this method for a 100 meter sprinter. For a 100 meter sprinter, the obvious quality that is most important is linear speed. This will be the most emphasized quality, although other qualities can also enhance linear speed performance. These will be Reactive power for efficient use of the elastic properties of the muscles and tendons. Loaded power for propulsion out of the blocks and early acceleration. Maximal strength for indirect enhancement of all other qualities. And endurance to some extent to ensure that maximal velocity is maintained until the end of the race. However, a sprinter won't need change of direction ability or hypertrophy training unless it's for injury prevention purposes. Linear speed training may follow a short to long approach, where the athlete starts with shorter distance sprints and slowly transitions to longer and longer sprints. These may start as short as 30 meters and build up to 100 meters when the athlete needs to peak. Reactive power may begin with loaded plyometric exercises and transition into unloaded plyometrics and overloaded plyometrics such as drop jumps. Loaded power may again transition from heavier loaded exercises with slower movement to lighter loaded exercises with faster movement. And endurance training may simply consist of sprints starting from longer distances of up to 200 meters with shorter rest periods to shorter distances of around 120 meters with longer rest and therefore faster speeds. Putting this together may look something like this. Again, we have every important quality being trained at all times, but the particular emphasis of each quality shifts from slightly more general to highly specific when we need to be at our absolute peak. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.